Hello, and thank you for joining today's Power Hour. My name is Sue Bernardin, and I'm the Associate Director of Gift Planning alongside Susan Damiani at St. John's University. As you may know, the Power Hour series is brought to you by the McAllen Society, and the series explores a diverse range of topics from art and lifestyle to a state of financial planning to fitness and health, so there's something for everyone. Um, today, I have the honor of introducing Rosa Yen, Director of International Student Development and Multicultural Affairs in the Office of Equity and Inclusion at St. John's University. Rosa is going to talk about Lunar New Year and its traditions and taboos. For many Asians like myself, this holiday is very special and one that we look forward to celebrating with our family. Just a little bit about Rosa. Rosa is from Taiwan and joined St. John's in 1999, first as a graduate assistant. Rosa holds a bachelor's degree in hospitality management and three master's degrees in higher education administration, East Asian studies, and history along with a professional certificate in quality assurance in service industry. Rosa's faith has led her to serve where she completed the Vincentian Mission Certificate at St. John's and is an active volunteer with Catholic Charities, St. John's Bread and Life, Midnight Run, New York Cares and local communities. We can spend the whole hour talking about Rosa, but we're so excited that she's able to join us today to speak to us about Lunar New Year. Um, and I'll let you take it away, Rosa. Thanks so much. Happy New Year, everyone. And Gong Xi Gong Xi, Xi Nian Kwai Le Gong Hi Fa Chai, Xi Ni Kwai Lo. This is, I just wish everybody a happy year of the tiger in all the languages that I speak. Hopefully, you all enjoyed it. And I also wanted to, um, for everybody, I put a, you know, I put a, um, the spelling here, Gong Xi Gong Xi, that's the most common way when you were seeing people during, new, during the New Year time, just hold your hands together, say gong xi, gong xi, everybody responded to you, they understand. And then again, gong xi, gong xi. So turn to around, anybody is around you, just turn to them to say gong xi, gong xi, so they will have a very good year of the tiger. So when I was planning, um, trying to see like what I can share for this session, I was very excited, you know, thanks to Sue for inviting me. And also I, I wanted to appreciate all of you to appreciate the Asian heritage and Asian culture. So I went through all these things, my God, just so much to share. So I ended up just, you know, try to just finalize, I could pick up three things to share with everyone. So, you know, for the Lunar New Year we're talking about is also called the Spring Festival, Lunar Calendar, and also the Chinese Zodiac. Uh, and then we're going to come up to share some the Lunar New Year's traditions and, and uh, preparations. And then we're going to end it up talking about some of the fun facts that are New Year no-nos, you know, to everyone. So hopefully, you know, you will enjoy the session and then uh, we're going to have fun to just converse over this Lunar New Year topic. So first of all, uh, Duna New Year is also called Spring Festival. So you can see like from the screen, you know, how to, how to pronounce that. Pinyin, that's in Chinese, uh, Chinese Mandarin. So Pinyin, you can say Chunjie, so simplify characters. You can see also the, uh, the, um, the characters there and also tradition. So the men in China are using the simplified Chinese and Taiwan use uh, this traditional. So you can see there's all the same meanings by different things. And then one of the most important festive, festive holidays of the year for many, many uh, East Asians. Um, the Lunar New Year is a part of the lunar calendar. So that's why, you know, every year almost, all, almost in the different days and also associated with the animal. That's what we're gonna call Chinese Zodiac I will introduce later on. And then traditionally it run from the evening precedes the first day and then to the Lantern Festival, that's the 15 days of the first calendar month. So you look at the image, that's how um, Lunar New Year is celebrating. Uh, people say, oh my gosh, it's so overwhelming. However, we need that overwhelming ambience. If there's no overwhelming ambience, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't consider as a celebration of a Lunar New Year. You know, I did, um, I did, uh, I planned a Lunar New Year dinner and Lunar New Year celebration at St. John's 19 years ago. And uh, sometimes you know, in the beginning, a lot of people approach and say, oh, Rosa is a little bit chaotic. But uh, so 
I have explained to them that's basically Asian culture. Like, you know, the raw, raw ambience is supposed to be like this. So if you're too, too serious or too professional, probably nobody's going to come to my event next year. So this is why you see overwhelming. Then yes, that's, that's exactly the right way we want the event to be like. And the Spring Festival, we also, you know, we also involved with that literally the world largest human migration. Just thinking about according to BCC News, before, uh, before our pandemic period, about 3 million trips made across China, only China itself. And considering this is, this is uh, the image actually from uh, Fortune magazine. So see that is overwhelming. Do we want to be in there? I you know me as a Chinese, I don't want to. <laughs> it's too much, too overwhelming. And then considering other countries also celebrate Lunar New Year, including Cambodia, mainland China, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Malaysia, Macau, Philippines, Singapore, South Korea, Taiwan, Thailand, Vietnam, and through South Asia countries. So thinking about all together and also the overseas in the Western countries, anywhere else has Eastern Asians in that country, I think the Lunar New Year is celebrating. So when it comes to the Lunar New Year, how, and, you know, it based on lunar calendar. So when, I think a lot of people, um, when you go to the restaurant, especially Chinese restaurant, you see they're distributing or showing this, or even sent you as a gift, the lunar calendar like this. But what exactly is this lunar calendar? So complicated, so many information on just on one page. So this is the entire cycle. Actually, in the beginning, the lunar calendar started is uh, you know agricultural production. So based on that, and then used to you know it was also called Sha calendar because it was first developed in Sha Dynasty, and then Qin Dynasty they started to um, reform and come to Han Dynasty. That's reform. That's basically the you know the current calendar we're seeing uh, based on the lunar calendar. I, you know, I would, I would like to share probably just only two minutes calendar for you to a video for you to see like how this calendar actually um, to view basically in Chinese, but um, you can see the, the explanation to say in English. Hi, Rosa. Maybe you can explain to us the meaning we cannot hear anything.
I'm sorry, I, you know, I gotta finish this one and let me open the another one. Yeah, sorry about the little bit of technical issues there. So then we look at, I hope that video will help you um, <clears throat> to see a little bit of, to, un to understand a little bit the, um, the lunar calendar was coming from. So you may see a lot of Chinese, like it, it seems like it emphasizes Chinese. So reason for that is because, you know, back in ancient, you know, ancient Asia, it's more like Africa, the entire, you know, the entire continent actually all together. Then afterwards, the different countries just started to, started to develop, become independent. So all these countries become all the Eastern Asian countries. But the most Eastern Asian countries, they adopt that philosophy of construction. Uh, Confucianism. So they're following the almost the same trait. So if you know if we are using that, you would look at a calendar, what I was introduced is a Chinese calendar, but you may see all, you know, you may also see this in other East Asia countries using their own languages. And then coming to um, Lunar New Year, like a calendar, all of that, we kind of associate that we always associate that the year uh, with the animal sign. It's not really the year. So when you see people, you know, Chinese, East Asians, Korean, Vietnamese, they might first ask you, oh, what is your animal sign? Like what, when they ask about what year you were born, usually we don't really ask people like what year, you know, what year were you born? It's like, oh, what is your animal sign? And then we kind of just look at those years and match the people's age and then we can figure out, you know, we can figure out like how, you know, how old the, uh, the person is. So this is, you know, I'm definitely introducing that um, the Chinese zodiac started from red and ended up with a pig. So there's a 12 animal signs in here and a 12 animal sign is a cycle. So that's a 12 years as a cycle for it. And this, um, I think it's like most of East Asia countries are still using this. And um, there's a video like we can show, but I, I don't think we have time to do it. So I'm gonna, you know, I will share all this videos information with Sue. So Sue will be able to share with the all of you. And then now does it look at um, what are you though? What animal sign are you? So you can try to look at those years and try to figure out uh, what year are you? I remember, you know, when I was there, while you while you were working on looking at those numbers, I can share some experience when I did with uh, with the uh, the students on campus because you know each animal has their characteristics, and back in ancient Asia. People using lunar calendar, using the this is zodiac, the you know, astrology. What I do is like then when you do the um, the marriage, the matching marriages, and that's how they see. You know, if you born of this year, you born that year, the animal sign are they compatible to each other or not? So it's very very interesting when we see that. So students usually say like, oh. My, my is this, my boyfriend is not, so we're not compatible. Always need to joke around like, this is a fun, but don't take it seriously. Don't, you know, don't fight. So very interesting when I look at the young people, they, uh, they are working, they are trying to figure out, you know, um, what they are. And then uh, some of the, um, the characteristics, if you are interested, I can also find some resources for you, share afterwards. But it's very, very interesting. Like, uh, come to Tiger is definitely the year very, um, you know, like a very, how to say that, um, independent, very independent with a high self-esteem and also very brave and, uh, and facing all the challenges, you know, like, a, like a never, never take a step back, just, just go and a little bit aggressive. So that's, you know, the years, year of a tiger, we also, you, we always thinking about is a, is a person has that, you know, fearless, like a very fearless uh, characteristic on them. So that's why we think that year of tiger is very good, especially when we're facing this whole pandemic situation. We know we're gonna we we're going to overcome this year. So pandemic is gonna end this year. 
very, very confident on that. Uh, you know, I think we talked about this. So you may that you may start have some uh, some questions, but I just you know I talked to Sue about that, and I would like to finish this whole presentation. The basic you know basic uh, information about Lunar New Year, and then we can discuss afterwards. So during the Lunar New Year preparation, the traditional actually ten days started from December December twentieth. This is based on lunar calendar. Whatever the days I say here is all about is all based on lunar calendar. It's not our Western calendar. So the twentieth, they started shopping for the new shoes, you know, like new clothing, snacks, and you know, all flowers, green, any uh, any of the decorations for the house. And then twenty fourth, they started doing cleaning cleaning the office, cleaning the house, cleaning the car, sweep away all your fortune and welcome, you know, be ready for the good incoming fortune, incoming luck. And 25th, that's how we started to shop for food. So all cooking ingredients and kitchenette and all of that. And then 28, we started to shopping for me, for vegetable. Then 29, that's the day we started to making, you know, pastas, noodles, buns, you know, and most, most of the Asians, you know, like we do dumplings. A lot of them, they actually use those homemade wraps. It's not really going to buy from outside and then bread and all of that. And then we get ready for doing a New Year Eve. So doing the New Year's and coming to preparation, also there's another part. Um, in business, basically people need to balancing their books, paying out of debt, collecting all due loans and charges. So that's, you know, that is something also interesting. Like if people still have a date on them, they didn't, you know, they didn't get to pay off their debts and they try not to go out. They either gonna stay home. Some of them even like not staying home. They, you know, they try to find some places, asylum, like a temple or so church to stay there, you know, to doing like, you know, the uh, New, Year, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, because, you know, apparently those people cannot finish all of that. They are, they are having the bad luck in them. So people don't want it to see them and they, they don't want people to see them either. So that's, you know, that's very interesting coming to business is, and then individual, you know, individually, like we are trying to, uh, you know, try to renew our friendship, we try to contact you some old friends we haven't had, a, you know, had a, um, a get together for a long time, mending their relationships and getting a spiritual cleaning of the old and get ready for the new. And then for the household, you know, we also, there's some in much of the China specific pre-holiday house cleaning project still practicing. They for sweep floors, which means that you don't you don't pick up the brooms to sweep the floors until this day. So it's, you know, it's a little bit like a, a very interesting project. A lot of people are still practicing that in Hong Kong is on December 20th and in the South of China is December 23rd. And then in the North is December 24th. And New Year's Eve, you know, uh, the first thing we do is a spring couplet. I think, you, you know, a lot of people probably familiar with this couplet we call Chun Lian. So traditionally a set of uh, spring couplets including three swirls, two verticals and one horizontal one with, uh, with auspicious phrases all the time. And then the two, uh, two vertical one is on each side. You can see that the, you know from the image on each side to vertical, and the horizontal one is actually you know on to, you know above the wall. And this two piece, I get it, you know some of them have it, some of them don't. It's really not necessary. And to fall back, you know, fall back um, in Chinese, actually, this two words you you're supposed to paste like upside down because with a uh, with the same pronunciation, it's like a the fortune, the happiness arrived. So that, you know, that's coming to Chinese, uh, Chinese um, uh, pronunciation. And usually written by photographers, uh, uh, for uh, calligraphers, and people who are good at it, you know, or people who are good at uh, calligraphy. And for this day, people put it, you know, if you, if you um, paste, on, paste on the, uh, the spring uh, couplets on the door, People walk by, they actually criticize that. You know, some of them maybe have a good writing. If some of them don't have a good writing, people are not, people wouldn't criticize you, say something bad, but they were like, oh, it could be better put outside, put out there for people to see. So that, you know, so that's like really, very, very interesting. So everybody's trying to find a good uh, calligraphy, you know, 
to uh, for their own spring couplets. And in some other traditions, like what we follow, is so cleaning, decorating the house with red and gold stuff that you know really emphasize red and gold. So you know it's really like a busy, really like bright color in it. And we offer sacrifices to ancestors. But this part is the Asian heritage. A lot, you know, I think a lot of people get confused about. Oh, this must be some. Uh, some like a religious, you know, like religious behaviors. No, it is paid to ancestors. You know, you uh, you may be you may see some tablets from any of the East Asian families. They all have a tablets. That's something else to remember. You know, we pay our respect to our ancestors and to remember our ancestors. And uh, we have a family reunion dinner. That's that's the. The, um, the biggest meal of the year is very, very, very important. And then the youngest show respect to the parents and a member of each generation above them in, uh, in the family. And then most, uh, a lot of families still doing that, you know, like about, not just bow to their parents, uh, some of them, they go further. They actually kneel down on the floor and they put their forehead, touch the ground to, you know, to wish their parents happy, happy new year. So, you know, uh, in Chinese, we say kou tou. Uh, I think it's like for, for the Cantonese, probably kou tau. So you may heard that before. And then after that, exchange red envelopes with the monies in there and other gift. And usually um, the, you know, the, the elders are gonna give it to the youngest. And doesn't matter how old you are, if you're single, you consider as a younger, so you got a red envelopes too. Like I'm single, so I still get a red envelopes every year, you know, from, from, my, from my family. And then you're setting off the firecrackers, you know, at a stroke of the midnight of a New Year's Day. This is, this is one thing is a, a little bit, um, I remember when I was young, you know, when I was young and my brothers, they had, you know, my nieces and nephew, they were born as a baby. And then you could tell like, you know, that moment, all the parents are trying to hold on their babies. And also people have a pet at home. They'll hold on them because that firecracker is from your entire neighborhood. You actually, you know, that actually scares most of this, uh, our pets and our babies. But it, it is very, very like, a, like, like a, it's a great thing you hear the, you hear the, uh, the firecrackers, you know, it's just like, hey, New Year's here, so everybody's happy New Year. It's more like a ball drops, you know, at the Times Square, so we, you know, we started to tending the Happy New Year, Happy 2022, something like that. And then we stayed up late on, this, on New Year's Eve, usually like overnight, and then, uh, you know, the longer you stay, uh, the better, I'll explain. Like, you know, we're watching Lunar New Year Gala show on TV, chatting, play games, you know, with the families. And Mahjong is the most common game played by East, um, by East and uh, Southeast Asians. And uh, one, of the, one of the concepts that come into most Asians, like the longer you stay up, you know, in um, your New Year's Eve, the longer life your parents will get. Although this sounds a little bit suspicious, you know, superstitious, but to us is a good intention for our parents' longevity and their good health. So to this day, we still follow that. You know, we try to stay up late until dawn, and then you know, and then we set off uh, another uh, fireworks, and then we go to sleep. So it's a very, very, you know, it's very interesting uh, traditions too. And the New Year's Day again, like open door um, firecrackers. So that's, you know, and other things, you know, a lot of firecrackers, you know, during the new year, new year period. And then we're putting on the new clothes, shoes, and then we go out to visit our relatives, friends and neighbors, just wish them, you know, like extending our new year's greetings to those people and watching new year parades and lion and dragon dances and participating in, in um, all different kinds of new year uh, festivities. So this is basically what we do for New Year. And we will talk about some, uh, some taboos afterwards. The second day is very interesting for, uh, you know, for our Lunar New Year. The married daughter went home on this day, but they have to leave uh, parents' home before sunset. So when thinking about ancient China, our uh, ancient Asians, when, when the daughters, when the daughters got married, they don't go home. They only they only get home like they only return the parents home once a year. Once a year. So this day, but to this day, this tradition still continue. So on the you know day two, 
all the married daughters is I'm going back home. I'm going back home to visit my parents. So it's very like a nice day to, you know, to have it very, very interesting. Everybody's still practicing on that. And there's few, you know, few days I wanted to share because you know there's 15 days. So this 15 days every day actually has a different meaning. So um day four, day four is um all you can see uh we're gonna see that all the um business open their doors to welcome the god of wealth. So firecrackers again, like you know, setting off just to welcome the uh, the god of uh, god of fortune to come in, the god of wealth, the god of fortune to come into us. Then day five, all the taboos we have that is gonna be break, it's gonna be broken on this day. We're gonna follow that. After this day, there's no taboos anymore. And then day six, that's when businesses start to open. Everybody return to work, and, and for this whole um. This whole celebration in East Asia, the academic calendar actually followed this day, follow this new year. So during this time in, in China, Korea, Vietnam, it is their uh, winter break. It's not like our winter break here. That's why St. John's, we started to have a Lunar New Year celebration at, on campus, because most of our students from Asia countries or our international students, they don't get to go home for this most important a family reunion. So we try to create something else for our students, you know, a home away from home for our students. So, um, and then coming back to um, day nine is also big. Day nine is the day um, how this East Asians, they try, they pay uh, respect to, to, uh, to uh, the God of the universe, you know, so, that's the day also firecrackers. There's a different different things and you know people from different religions they will do different uh, like a different ways to uh, to pay their um, respect. And then day eleven, uh, day eleven is also very interesting. Day eleven is a father-in-law tree, son-in-law, you know, on this day. So basically, actually, it's for the you know for the son-in-law to bring their daughter to home to see their parent to see their parents again, just using the other opportunities. And then afterwards, we, you know, day 14 started preparing for Lantern Festival. And then coming to the day 15 is a Lantern Festival. So Lantern Festival basically um, is what we call Yuan Xiao Jie. That, you know, that is the Yuan Xiao. Um, Yuan Xiao actually is a small brown dumplings of rice, you know, made of, made of a, a rice flour. So mostly sweet. Some of them, they do, uh, they do have a meat in there. So on this day is the end of a Lunar New Year festival period. And then, you know, we all eat in Yuan Xiao, that's a tradition. And we enjoy street and decoration with the colorful lanterns. Um, you can get onto Google or YouTube, just Googling, Googling a lantern festival, um, Lunar New Year. China, all over the Asia countries, they all have some competition, some experience. You know, exhibition, exhibition, all this lantern, very, very creative, very, very beautiful. And playing riddles, very interesting, like a riddles, they are written on, on the slips, of, sorry for the typo, uh, the slips of paper and uh, attached to a lantern, okay, sips, you know, maybe I was thinking about uh, drinking a wine on this day. <laughs> it's just a joke. And then watching dragon lion dance and also uh, setting off the fire, you know, fire, fireworks and firecrackers. And then we finish the entire Lunar New Year uh, festival period. So this is a fun thing. And then we talk about tradition. Now that's a move forward to uh, the Lunar New Year no-nos. So Lunar New Year taboo, never, never, never give four in a red envelope. Number four is the same pronunciation as a death in in actually most East Asian languages. So we try to get away from that. And then do not wear white or black. It's, um, I think it's like, you know, red and black or red and white should be okay, but we try to avoid that. And do not take out trash on the first day of a Lunar New Year. Somebody said, do not sweep the floor. Uh, it is okay to sweep the floor, but there's a, some, there's a some direction. You sweep the floor from our inward and you don't take out trash uh, out of your door 
because this could be a fortune. You could just mistakenly throw out some fortune on this day. So that, you know, so this is something else, a tradition, you know, some of the traditional taboo we've been following to this day is still following it. Do not get a haircut during the first lunar, uh, lunar month. The reason is like, uh, you know, we always, for the, for the, uh, the, Confucius, the Confucius philosophy, our skin, our hair, it's all coming from our parents. So during this whole month, we try to not cut anything else that, you know, try to not cut anything else that I got it from my parents. So, and also like, you know, when you get hair cut, you started, you started touching scissors. So that's something that's sharp. You can hurt yourself. So when you hurt yourself at the same time, you're gonna hurt your parents. It's hard, you know, you make them worry. So we try not to do that. That's, you know, that's part of the taboo, but with a very, very good intention. And then do not visit doctors on the first day of a Lunar New Year. That's, you know, you try to put something else all positive. So we don't want it to bring that negative energy, you know, like you get sick or anything else, so try to get avoid from this day. So you will keep that positive energy. You will give that good health throughout the entire year. So when you see this slide, do you see, do you notice anything else is missing here? You know, you can type on the chat so Sue can read it. I can, you know, something else you can see. Do you see anything else I am missing here? Give you three seconds. Sue, you can let me know if anybody, you know, for some reason, I don't think I'm, when I share screen, I'm, I'm unable to see chat, you know, chat box. Okay. Um, I see the number four, correct? I know Bingo. <laughs> Bingo, Jardine. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> number four. You see, like I'm purposely skip number four. We are not using four for any of anything. Even like not just Lunar New Year. When you go, when you visit Asia countries, Eastern Asia countries, you see hospital. There's no fourth floor. Definitely there's no fourth floor in the hospital. So if you had an opportunity to visit um, East Asia countries, you will notice that. That's really <laughs> such a bad luck. And uh, uh, January 28th, you know, uh, to actually last week, uh, last week when I had a 19th annual, uh, annual Lunar New Year celebration at St. John's, we given out the vouchers for students and the raffle tickets. I, I have to, literally skip four. Because when people got a voucher, you're number four. Believe me, the Asian students are gonna return it to you like, oh, thank you, I don't want it. <laughs> literally, you give me a voucher with it, that's a $10 Starbucks voucher, so you can get free coffee. But no, I don't want it, don't give it to me, thank you. <laughs> you know, somebody may not believe that, but this is a reality and this is a true. So that's a look at like more, uh, more taboos. So do not break a tools or other equipment. It's just something else like, you know, like you try to keep everything else peaceful. So when we, you know, I remember when I was young, like sometimes the kids are just like running around and try to help out during uh, Lunar New Year. So I, I remember there was one time I broke, you know, I broke a, uh, a mark. So all this, all this elder, like my parents, everybody's older than me. They started talking about, okay, peace and pieces, pieces and pieces. Try to say to that too to reduce that, that entire bad luck, you know, when I broke that, that mark it may bring to the family. So we don't break anything else and do not do needle work on the first day of Lunar New Year. So basically that's the same thing. It's a sharp thing, so you can hurt yourself and that comes to good intention, you know, to, to, um, to hurt your parents' heart. Do not cut anything else using knives or scissors. Very similar to number eight. Do not get into argument. We, you know, the Asian, the Asian culture has, it, no, I shouldn't say not just Asian culture, the entire Confucian, the Confucius philosophy is emphasize harmony. So we want everything's in harmony. So if in the beginning of the Lunar New Year, you can not get into argument, it somehow like symbolize this whole year, you are going to be in harmony with anybody else you are interact with. If you don't, well, you know what, well, I just be careful with that. So, you know, so this is the whole taboos and 
you know, I it's just like a little uh, simple things that we, you know, I share about Lunar New Year. And I hope you will enjoy that. And if any question that we can, you know, we can just converse, at, you know, after this, I try to, you know, I try to match, match my time, not go over time, so we will have a more more time to chat. And this is a, uh, this is a video, this is an Instagram reel I wanted to, I want, you know, I wanted to share, but with the time I'm going to, um, I will copy this and then share on the chat with you when I finish sharing screen. And also, um, and other things I wanted to share is from a student, a Chinese student, uh, international student from China. She played this uh, Asian, the, anti, the Asian music instrument called Erhu, one of the most difficult uh, instrument to learn. So Sally playing very, very well. And she did a very good things like for uh, last year. She, she made this film. She is majoring in TV and film. And she made this video just pay, tri uh, pay tribute to all essential workers in China during the whole uh, entire COVID uh, pandemic. It was a very, very powerful video and listen to her music is so great. But um, again, like, I'm gonna share this video with you like uh, afterwards, uh, you know, uh, when Sue can share with you because we don't have time today to do that. That's, you know, it's a little bit longer, probably like four to five minutes. And um, I guess that's the end of uh, my presentation. And I hope I hope you enjoyed it. And then uh, now is our time to chat. Thank you so much, Rosa. This was so informative, and I learned I learned a few I learned a few things. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I know that Jerry um, had a question, so let me see if I can get Jerry on the phone. Hi, Jerry. In the meantime, I can ask you a question. Jerry? Hi, Jerry. Yeah. Hi, it's me. Hi. Hi. Did you have a question for Rosa? Uh, I pressed the wrong button, but I wanted oh. to tell her how much I enjoyed this, that I learned so many things I never knew about the Lunar New Year. So, oh, thank you, Jerry. Thank Happy you. New Year to you Thanks, and God. your family. It was wonderful. Thank Bravo. you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, let's see. I do have a question here. Is the number eight? bad luck or is it only the four num you see that when number you say eight. number eight oh number eight is good uh number six and number eight both the numbers are good so you may see a lot of uh you know a lot of people they're actually using number six and number eight especially for chinese and cantonese because number six actually uh the same pronunciation as a smooth and number eight, it's about um, like uh, prosperity. So this is this is two numbers. A lot of Asians love to use them. When you know you can start to to observe that they uh, the place on their cards or their phone number. You're gonna see like they literally choose that number. They pay money for that, especially for business. <laughs> I can agree. I was always told not yeah. to have a phone number that ends with a four. Yeah, I saw Ethel. Ethel has a question about if yeah. you don't use, if you can use knives or scissors on Lunar New Year, can you still cook? No, <laughs> you don't, no, you don't make new food. You, we all eat leftovers from New Year's Eve. So this day, most, you know, most family don't really cook. You don't want to do, you don't really don't want to use that. You know, sometimes I forgot about it, but imagine like to this day, I forgot about, but I want to cook. And I probably grab a knife and I, I put it back because oh no 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 I'm not gonna break that I'm not gonna I'm gonna break the taboo so so very interesting so you you eat a leftover and a lot of people are actually using hot pot so I you know I would assume that's you know hot pot become very popular afterwards whatever anything else you just you know dump in in the, in the ball and everybody's using the hot pot. <laughs> Also, is it true that red envelopes have to be given in doubles, like from the husband and the wife? Oh, yes. Like not just not just the, uh, the husband and wife, anybody, anybody. It has to be in double. But please don't do for number four. No four dollars, no forty dollars, no four hundred dollars. <laughs> okay. I, I do the same in my my family. We hand out red envelopes to all the little kids and anyone that's single. So. We have a really good tradition here. Um, I just wanted to ask you, you know, with the pandemic, 
and with the families not being able to get together, you know, how has this sort of changed Lunar New Year these past few years? I know that was difficult. Yeah, I, you know, for this, I actually just using China as an example. You know, we're talking about pandemic and they have a probably mm-hmm. over 3 billion cross, you know, like across trips. So the past year, they only have a, I think it's like a 1.1.13 billion. So literally had, you know, cat to have. But thanks to high technology, you know, now that FaceTime, the Zoom, WebEx, you know, WhatsApp, all of that. It, uh, Asia, they, they don't use, they, uh, they use Line. That's one of the social media, you know, what Line or WeChat, you know, in mm-hmm. China, very popular. So they offer like all this FaceTime, you know, for, uh, for people too. So. Like, you know, I, I didn't go, I didn't get to go home. My mom's in Taiwan, in Taipei. So I didn't go, I didn't go to get home to see my family. But what I do is the same thing. We're just on this day. So my nephew, they will try to call me or like, FaceTime with me. So that, that just, you know, but still it's different. You know, you have to get together. And, uh, you know, uh, tapping was Sue's question. I had a Lunar New Year celebration last Friday. Like literally, a pro, you know, approximately two hundred students show up to attend it. Yeah. That's how much they wanted. Everybody just want to get some like positive energy and want to have family and beyond. Mm-hmm. So, in, in in continuing that, is you mentioned it was the nineteenth year of the Lunar yeah. New Year celebration um, at St. Yeah, John's. That's a, how yeah, did, nine, how nineteen this, years? That's a long time. I know. Nineteen years ago, we started. We started doing this and with a very limited budget. But then. Uh, you know, like the university started realize like this is so important for our students, especially when they see how many people showed up. Mm-hmm. I think it's like, you know, uh, when they're doing a normal time, we have about like 500 to, you know, 500 to 600 people, university members to show up. And then uh, faculty members, administrators also bring, uh, their, you know, their family to come to join us. So next year we are doing 20th anniversary celebration at St. John's for doing a new year. So hopefully, you know, definitely invitation gonna go to you and I hope to see you guys in person. That's amazing. That's truly amazing. And it's wonderful that you're giving, you know, international students and, you know, students that live in the United States an opportunity to come together. Oh yeah. I think. That's wonderful. You know, you know, it's very interesting. Like, like you, you know, you you mentioned this. Like during this whole new during a New Year time, sometimes when I talk to students from you know from East Asia countries, they really choke up. They choke up when they talk about that. That's how much the homesickness they have come in. Mm-hmm. That's that's very true, um, especially for international students. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think they only get to go home, you know, once or twice. Um, but let's see, do we have any more questions from our attendees? No, I think we're okay. So, um, so I will definitely share the links that Rosa will share with us. Um, yeah. But I really want to thank Rosa for your time. Um, it's amazing to hear about, you know, Lunar New Year, the taboos. Um, I definitely learned a few, so I'm going yeah. I'm gonna take those with me. Um, but I also wanted to let everyone know that, you know, if you enjoy our Power Hour series, definitely, you know, continue coming in to join us. We do have a fitness class with the Jamming Johnnies every Saturday, and I know Rosa joined us, so I, um, I hope you'll be able to join us. And then we have a few upcoming events, you know, this month and next month. So we are actually uh, headed down to Florida. St. John's is returning to Florida after two (laughs) years. So if you're in the Florida area in the first few weeks of March, you know, check it out um, and hope you can join us there. We're going to return back on March 1st with another wonderful power hour with Professor April Miranda, who's going to come and speak to us about, you know, empowerment and her new business memoir. So I hope you can join us there. And then we're going to have a few more power hours. So I'm definitely going to share the link with everyone. And I thank Rosa. And we'll share the recording once it's available. Um, But everyone have a wonderful day. Yeah, thank thank you you so much much for having me. And I put, you know, I put my my contact number, um, email address there. So feel free to reach out to me. And uh, there's some resources I can share. I'll send it to Sue and Sue can share with all of you. So happy and healthy year of the tiger to you and your family. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.